Welcome back to the Love, Life, and Legacy podcast, the podcast that is dedicated to you, my friend. Navigate these hypersexualized times of ours. And today's episode is straight from the heart of Andrew Love himself. This is an in depth, full guide of how to create and craft and achieve a North Star. This is from one of our mini courses on our website. If you want to watch the entire course and take it for yourself, go to edu.hinoon.org. That's edu dot org and you can check out the course i do recommend that you get a pen and paper buckle up and enjoy this episode hello and welcome you're going to be learning what is a north star goal what is its true power how to set a north star goal and how to achieve your north star goal you see high noon is an organization that from the very get-go was dedicated to helping people break free from pornography But since that point in time, we've evolved tremendously to become a solution center to help people reach fulfillment. You see, so many people don't understand this one basic concept, and that is that if you take a bad habit away from your life, if you remove it, you need to supplant it with something else. You need to put something in that space. And if you don't, another bad habit will creep up for sure. The point is, a North Star goal helps you to identify exactly what that thing is that you would like to do. We are pretty good as people at identifying all the many things in our lives that are not working or that we don't like. But it's hard to get really specific about the things that we really want. The emotional needs that we have, the mental needs that we have, the physical and spiritual needs that we have. And when you become acutely aware of your actual deep down needs and start making goals to achieve those ends, you will find yourself on the path towards fulfillment. I'm sure by now at this point in your life, you've set goals before, either a New Year's resolution, or you've set a SMART goal, or you've heard of now Kimmy's wiser goal setting. Everybody has different methods, but they're typically about changing your life externally. It's about getting into better physical shape. It could be about getting more money, getting a pay raise, getting an upgraded house, something along those lines. That's typically how we view goals, is I want to do something over there. And the funny thing is, we're doing all of this in order to achieve an emotional state. The reason why you would want more money is probably because you want to feel more secure financially. The reason you would want to get into better physical shape is because you would want to feel better about your body. And this is a key distinction with the North Star goal. It is starting with the feeling. It's an internal goal. You see, especially in the realm of sexuality, most people are very reactive. They don't know how sexuality is correlated with their emotional or mental or spiritual or physical state. They just either are feeling sexual or they're not. And because of that, they have many blind spots and they end up doing things that they don't quite understand with their sexuality. But what we've seen here at High Noon is that the more some Somebody is whole and fulfilled, the less likely they are to do something self-destructive. The more clear you are about who you want to be, the less likely you are going to deviate and do something that's completely out of character from that person that you want to be. The problem is that most people don't know what that looks like, who they want to be and how they want to feel in life from day to day. So the North Star goal really is about defining what fulfillment looks like for you. You see, if you're an unhappy person, you can change your external environment all you want, but you'll wind up back with the same thoughts that produce the same feelings that gave you this result of not being happy, of feeling disconnected or isolated or frustrated, you'll always wind up back there. So it's vital that we change from the inside out. We will be able to impact our environment when our internal self is extremely clear, when it's bursting with vitality. But if we're always waiting for our environment to influence us, we're always going to be the victim of circumstances. So we will get into more details later, but just imagine this. So the power of a North Star goal really is in the fact that if you can watch a video like this, it means that you're consuming high noon content, which means you've identified a part of your life that 
that you're not quite happy with. That's where people meet high noon usually. They're either struggling with pornography, they're struggling in a relationship with a spouse, or they're struggling with their kids, and they don't quite know what to do. So the first thing is you have to identify, well, what would a great relationship look like? Because otherwise, you'll just be fighting and resisting the problem. And when you're just at the level of the problem, you won't find any solutions. In order to truly find solutions to a problem, you must rise above the problem. And you do that by what we're gonna be practicing, some visualizations, but it all starts with getting clear on what does fulfillment look like. So if you were to define a happy day for yourself, what would that look like? So we are gonna get into how to create a North Star goal. You have to answer a very basic but fundamental question if you want to be happy, and that is, you have to answer the question of what do I want? I've been asking this increasingly of more and more people in my circle, the people that I'm helping, and it's surprisingly difficult to answer. The reason is, if you're working really hard all day but you don't know what you want, you're never gonna find fulfillment. You need to know what it is that you're working towards. And then you can measure, am I doing it in the right way to achieve the goals that I have set? But you cannot set goals unless you first figure out what do you want. So people, again, are pretty good at identifying their external needs. We're trained from an early age through marketing, through commercials, through all these different means to know what shirts we really, really want or which car we really, really want or how we want to look or how we want to show up. But we can't identify as clearly the emotions that we would like to have the thoughts that we would like to have, the spirituality that we would like to have. And because of that, we end up settling for this hodgepodge mix of emotions because we don't know which thoughts we want and we don't curate our life with any great measure. So I would like to propose this idea that it is absolutely possible to choose your thoughts, to choose the thoughts that you would like to have, the ones that will support a healthy and vital mindscape, and choose the emotions that you would like to have, and to choose the spiritual connection that you have with God, with the world around you, with life itself, and how that would feel in your body. Now we're gonna do a visualization quickly, and I would assume that you're closing your eyes, but you don't have to, whatever you want, it's you and your phone. But I would like for you to stop, you know, looking at any other screens and just focus on this one exercise. It is created to help you get clearer about what it is that you truly want. Okay, so if you can close your eyes, it will help to kind of let your imagination wander. Now in your mind's eye, I want you to start imagining the perfect day. It's not a perfect day because you're on vacation, because you're escaping your life. It's a perfect day even on a Tuesday. You're still doing day-to-day -day stuff. It's not special in the external sense. It's special in the fact that you are just feeling so good about life. So I want you to think, in this perfect day, what time do you wake up? How does it feel to wake up that time feeling so excited about your day? Feeling so optimistic about the possibilities that lie ahead? Out of bed, what are the first things that you do that bring you so much joy and fulfillment? Is it exercise or stretching? Is it meditation or prayer? What are you eating? What are the foods that you eat that make you feel strong and healthy, that give you power and energy and clarity? What does it feel like in your home environment? If you have other people living with you, what is it like to speak with them with such joy in your heart? How are they reacting to your great mood? What positive impact are you having on the people in your life? What does it feel like to leave your house knowing that it's going to be a wonderful day because you are a powerful child of God. Going to school or work, what does it feel like to just simply be en route, nothing special is happening, but you just see the love in people's eyes. You see how wonderful this world is. If this is truly a powerful day, how much time are you spending by yourself, deeply in focus, working on the things that you're passionate to work on? And how much time is spent in collaboration, 
and in conversation. Throughout your day, how much are you stopping to rest and think and to laugh and to pray and to connect? What kind of foods are you eating? If you were just filled with energy and vitality, what would you be doing throughout your day? And in the evening time, as you're coming back, how are you eating dinner? Are you by yourself just celebrating life and the delicious food that you have? Or are you with other people? How are you talking and conversing? Is it serious and you're having a really deep, amazing, insightful conversation? Or are you laughing and very jovial? And as you're winding down, what are you doing at night to go to bed knowing that you just had the greatest day? Are you going to bed early? Are you going to bed later? Are you reading? Are you meditating? Are you praying? What are you doing to allow you to really close this day with such intentionality and perfection? Now, if you're closing your eyes, please open them. The purpose of this exercise is to help you identify what a perfect day would look like, how you show up, the type of thoughts that you would have, the type of feelings that you would have, because that will start to inform your decisions that you make from day to day. When you set your North Star goal, which we're gonna get into in the next video, this will be your informational foundation. It'll be the necessary data that you have to start writing down your North Star goal. Please understand that I do this multiple times a day. I try to get everybody in my groups that I help to do the same. When you visualize that future version of yourself, you get to experience the emotions of that future now in your heart and it changes how you make decisions. When you're stressed out, when you're angry, when you're frustrated, you make decisions that are closed-minded and closed-hearted. Your best self is not accessible in that state. So in order to make better decisions, you can go into your mind and say, well, what would it look like if I was at my best? And you can start to feel that you loosen up your mind, you loosen up your heart, and you can get back to being that person. This is a very valuable exercise that I would recommend trying constantly throughout your days to remind yourself of the person that you want to be. Hey, just a quick interruption to tell you about the 40 day high noon challenge. If you're trying to find a way to start living a high noon life today with no shadow and create a radiant blessing, then this simple challenge is for you. We will send you daily lessons from our team that will keep you motivated on your journey. It's totally free, guys, and you'll get constant content directly to you. Just sign up today at highnoon.org slash challenge. That is highnoon.org slash challenge. All right, back to the show. All right, so in this video, I wanted to get into some details about how to specifically write the North Star Goal. You see, it should be very clear and concise, and it should trigger some positive emotions every time you relate with it. Throughout your day, you'll notice that regardless of how focused you are in the morning, and you set your intentions, today's gonna be like this. At some point, you start to drift away. Either you zone out, or you start making some decisions that are counter to your actual goals. And the North Star goal serves as a reminder to snap you back into remembering why you decided to make those intentions in the first place. It should be a short thing that you can say that is like a slap in the face. See, a lot of people, when they have their phones, they pull them out unconsciously and they start just mindlessly drifting through outer space. You don't know why you're there. You don't even remember how you got there. And so you are at the mercy of your circumstances. But when you have a North Star goal, and let's say it's to be very emotionally connected to your environment and to be mentally crystal clear, when you start doing anything unconsciously, if you have a relationship with your North Star goal, it starts to feel a little bit strange to go back into this old habit because you start to observe, wait a second, I'm pulling out my phone. I'm not living very intentionally right now. This is not very crystal clear of me. So do I want to do what I'm about to do? And a lot of times we don't ask ourselves this question. And even if we do, like, should I look at my phone? You have nothing to measure that action against. Your North Star goal, you can measure everything against that. Should I take out my phone? I don't know, what, I, what do I need to do on there? Do I need to do some banking? Yeah, that makes sense. I'll get in, I'll get out, I'll do some banking. Oh, I'll write an email, oh, I'll write a social media post, and then I'll get out. But if you're drifting in there, it starts to become crystal clear. 
clear because that is not in line with your North Star goal. So I have a couple of examples of North Star goals that have been very impactful for the people that use them. The first one is to build empowering relationships. You see with this person, they really felt isolated in their life and they really felt like they didn't have a lot of strong connections with the people in their life. And at the end of the day, they felt lonely and empty and they filled that void with pornography. And so his decision was, I want to build empowering relationships. The funny thing about this situation is that soon after creating this North Star goal, he started realizing that his life is filled with amazing people. He was just not connecting with them in any deep and meaningful way. He was very transactional with his relationships, which he was learning from porn, which is very much a transaction. There's no heart and soul in porn. It's all a transaction. And that was filtering into his life. And so the moment that he started to become more intentional with the relationships that he was in, he started realizing, first of all, how cool everybody was and how much he really loved them, but he started to get more fulfilled by engaging with these great people that he unconsciously had built the support system around him and he wasn't using it. So that was a very powerful North Star goal. So the original video got cut off at some point, we don't know why, so I'm re-recording the second half of this video just to make sure that it's perfect. Uh, I have another example of a North Star goal for you and that is becoming a more trustworthy and confident me that I can be proud of. So you see, what you want out of a good North Star goal, what it should really be is very concise and very powerful. Something that reminds you of who you're committed to being so that you can get back on track. Life isn't about perfection, it's about alignment. Are you aligned with being the person who you want to be, thinking the thoughts that you want, having the emotions that you want, doing the actions that you choose? And a life of in intentionality leads you to the person that you choose to be. A life of randomness leads to random results that usually leads to stress and subsequent fallout from that stress. So again, the North Star goal, short, concise, ideally one sentence, maybe two at most, but something that is clear for up here and is really powerful for your heart. I just wanted to talk about how to really achieve your North Star goal. You see, in High Noon, we really promote this idea, this window of time of about 90 days because it's a very powerful amount of time. It's the same length as a season, as a quarter of a year, right? So in a season, so much happens. In a summertime, in the spring, in the winter, or fall, so much takes place in a person's life. So within that span of time, you're able to make massive leaps of transformation, but it's also a reasonable amount of time. You see, when we set lofty five-year, 10-year, 20-year goals, we have this mechanism in our brain that kind of thinks, well, everything's gonna work itself out later, and we kind of kick the can down the road. We let things go on a little bit too long. There's no sense of urgency or immediacy. But with 90 days, it's long enough to have a lot of change and transformation, but it's short enough to know if you're off track, if you're gonna make your goal or not. And so what it allows you to do is to step-by-step step create a new normal. That's the purpose of a North Star goal, is that if you're clear about the person that you want to be, the thoughts and feelings that you'd like to have, then every day for 90 days is you practicing being that version of yourself so that it becomes more and more and more normal so that that becomes your eventual default mode. Let's say it's something about, I want to be a very peaceful person who doesn't get angry at my environment. Little by little, you'll be able to practice what to do when that anger starts to rise up. And you'll notice that that anger has less and less power the more that you're able to identify it and choose a different emotion. And all of a sudden, you have control over that anger. It's very much possible, but that 90 day window is really important. So please, we ask that you really try to set a new North Star goal every 90 days. And if you would like to repeat your North Star goal or go deeper with your North Star goal, then start the same North Star goal, but with a new and fresh energy. Because a lot of times I'll see people just continue the same North Star goal with the same energy and they don't really have that same kind of give and take energy, that powerful energy that comes with having a strong, clear relationship with an internal North Star goal. So in order to let go of your old bad habits and adopt new habits, 
We really recommend having a clear, concise, and emotional-based North Star goal that you practice for 90 days and let that become your new normal. That's the end of this course. It, I told you it was gonna be short. I hope it was very helpful. By the end of this, you should have a North Star goal. Test it out. What it's like to have an internal goal. It's really life-changing. It's life-giving. I hope it really helps you to get the fulfillment that you're seeking after. Hey, did you know that our team wants to do more events? Well, if you wanna bring the High Noon message to your community or group, then let us know and we'll try to work something out. There's a simple application that you can fill out right now at highnoon.org slash invite. And one of our team members will get back to you to see what's possible. That's highnoon.org slash invite. All right, see you in the next episode.